Welcome Tangle friends. My name is Annie Reiser. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher and a certified botanical illustrator. Thanks for joining me for another lunchtime Tangle session. Today we're going to be learning something very spring-like as spring has sprung up here in the Rocky Mountains um, and I'm feeling in the mood for leafy things to start growing. Um, so I'm going to press it by doing this one. This is called Fleavy. Fleavy is a tangle spelled like this by Hanny Walburgess. She's a CZT. And as you can see, this is my step out. This is my tangle tag step out. Um, it starts, it's, it's actually quite easy, but very effective because it builds and it incorporates these little leaves within the line work. And when you shade that, it's beautiful. And I use this um, in, in different ways. Um, uh, you can see that if you vary the size of your leaves, you can make um, variations. Uh, you can also vary the spacing of your leaves. You can also put them all in a different shape. This one has a heart, for example. Um, and then today we're going to work on a little wreath that I made. The actual Fleavy, as you can see here in the step out, is a little bit, uh, the leaves are a little small. This is very delicate and I love that look as well, but I wanted to do something a little bit bolder and bigger. So I decided to use a flux leaf from Zentangle. Flux is this just this leaf shape that um, you can see here. This one is Maria's or Rick's flux leaf and this is Maria's flux leaf. Maria's looks more like a, a mucca um, frond. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna concentrate on this flux leaf instead of the smaller fleavy one that the that we have here with Hannah's version. And so we're gonna be big and bold like this, and then you can really see the effectiveness of that shading and the fact that these these leaves just like grow out of this vine, which is really pretty. Um, another place I like to use this tangle is in my pandemic posies. Here's a class I did last year and you can see the little vine of the Fleavy weaving inside and out kind of like our organza here. So it's a nice um, tangle to play around with in different different settings. So today I'm going to be using a Zendala from Zentangle. I love this, this drawing surface. It's soft. It's easy to um, shade. I'll be shading with my 3B Stettler graphite pencil. I will be blending that graphite with a tortillon or a paper blending stump. I'm going to use my O1 micron pen, sorry, upside down, <laughs> and maybe my PN, which stands for plastic nib because it fills in faster. Um, and then if I need to lift some graphite, I do always have my kneaded eraser handy. Uh, just to finesse my, my shading, not to erase any lines. So I'm going to start by using this amazing tool that I got from, for Christmas from my daughter. Um, it's from Maker's, Maker's Cabinet, and it's, it's a um, compass that you, you can adjust, let me show you, the size of by pressing down, and you can make all different size circles and I am going to use it to just pencil out my circle for my Fleavy wreath. So now I'm going to just take my zero 01 and ink out this first vine line where we're going to build our leaves. Make sure that you um, turn your tile so that your hand is comfortable. That way you can make your most evenly spaced lines. And be mindful about your line work. So now I'm gonna, what you can do, um, I, I have found that about one, two, three, four sets of these leaves is a good, um, 
good distance for us to be able to fill in with other things. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a tick mark about equally spaced so I know where to start with my leaves um, and, and how, how far I need to leave the spacing for. So we're going to just do a flux. We're going to start here and we're going to bow out the big bow arc and we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Almost looks like bunny ears. I think I have Easter on my mind. And you can, you can make these as large or as small as you want. Um, I'm just kind of going for a medium size. Definitely bigger than the, the fleety leaf. So that's the first step in our pattern. And what we're going to do is basically just aura this original vine line. Um, and I like to do it in sections. So I'm going to start here. You just do, you just go over a little and echo that line. And I like to do both lines in each section right away so that I can keep track. You'll see when we start building this, you actually kind of have to keep track of how many lines you have. Um, it's confusing. So I'm taking my time. And I'm breathing. So there's the first set and we're going to just continue on by adding some more flux leaves and some more orid lines and we're going to do it very uh, in order and in very methodically. So here in the corner of this flux leaf where it meets the line, we're going to do another one. Another pair. We're just going to keep doing that until we have all four pairs. So now you see that we have two pairs on each of the lines. And now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to aura the line section by section, one on either side. One, two, You can see that I haven't finished it here, but once we get so many of these lines built up, it gets a little bit hard to see if you've completed the circle. So it's always kind of good to count um, one, two, three, four pairs. Okay, so we're going to do this again. I'm going to put another set of flux leaves in my wreath. So at a certain point, the leaves start kind of getting off 
not really off kilter, but they, they don't match up with their other partner because this is a circle and these are now on the inside and these are on the outside. So it's kind of like running around a racetrack and being on a relay team. If you, um, you're gonna have a different configuration if you're on the inside, shorter, shorter around than if you're, if, if you're running on the outside. So uh, don't worry that your, your leaves are not lining up anymore. The important thing is that we have one, two, three on either side in all of my um, sets. So here I go, I'm gonna do my line again, or this one. That's number one, I'm gonna start counting now. This is number two. And number three. Three meaning the third set of or lines. And then if you if you see little spaces where um, the, the leaves are separate, you can go ahead and draw behind. That was three. And so here's number four. So it looks like this whole little wreath coil is connected. So there we have a nice set of leaves. I think I'm going to do one more. Um, and I don't necessarily need to make another or line after I've made this final outside set of leaves. So what the lines do that is so cool, they incorporate those leaves into this wreath and it just looks like they're growing out of it. And I think it's really kind of a magical look. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, correct. Now I've got all, all four um, sets. You could, if you felt like it, you could add more on here, but we're gonna, we're gonna do some embellishing here with some other things. So I'm going to finish off my flux. Like I said, this is uh, Rick's flux style and he puts down a midrib to make it look like it's a little leaf and a few dots indicating the direction that the midrib would grow. And what it does by adding this, it really emphasizes kind of an opening up of the leaves, um, gives it a foreshortened perspective in a sense. So it's kind of popping up. You also always want to make sure that you continue that arc stroke that um, emphasizes the, the bend in this leaf. This is very good Zen flow, these little strokes and dots. I just almost don't want it to end. So one of the other things I like to do at this point is um, give this a little bit more character by adding some weighted line. For example, where this comes together, I'm just going to give that, re restate that line a little bit. It just really helps us see where our cluster of leaves begins to pop.
You can also, for example, um, weight just the bottom side of each of these little fleety leaves because if the light were coming from here, like it does in botanical illustration, you would have the right side kind of falling into shadow, a little bit darker. And you don't have to do this. And, you, and if you do, you don't even have to do every single one because all we're trying to do is make this a little bit more lively. And then you could do a couple of these. Of course, there's you can vary these in the, the distance um, at which you place them, meaning the spacing. If you spaced a little bit more space in between like here, that's gonna give you an opportunity to do things like little perfs um, in there. But we're gonna also do something that's really fun. So we're basically getting three tangles today. We're gonna do a Bronx cheer. And a Bronx cheer is a tangle by Maria Thomas, founder of Zentangle, and she actually came up with it when she was trying to hide a big blob, black mistake, I think it was, um, where ink just blobbed. And um, she needed to cover it up. So what she did was she just started drawing little perfs around that blob until they became this little circular thing that looks like, for me, like a raspberry. So uh, you wanna really restate those little perfs that you're making. Um, and I'm gonna add several of those all the way around my wreath so it looks like I have berries growing. If you really want your berries to be completely circular, you can always do a string like this with your pencil. You can also pencil them in so you can see where they would look good in your composition. Sometimes it's nice to do a few Here. So again, this is kind of a, a nice Zen flow moment where you now you know what you're doing. All you have to do is fill in those little circles with more circles. Really restating that circle. There's a new tangle out, pretty new, um, that Maria did a spin off of this Bronx cheer and it's called Bronx sphere or spear and it's it's this elongated almost feather like um, spear shape that has these same little perfs um, filling that whole shape and it's really beautiful too. Look that one up. It's called Bronx spear, I believe. It's in one of the um, project packs.
So on these little interstices here, for example, I'm going to do just a larger curve and then fill in. Same here, maybe a couple just to um, fill that gap to make it look like it's a little bit more connected and incorporated. And same here, just a few more curves. Proofs are always so extremely decorative. Um, they've been used in illuminated letters and manuscripts for, um, for that reason. Whoops, this one I forgot. You don't want it, you don't want to actually make the outline of this circle in ink. You just want this berry to kind of grow organically so that the edges are rounded. There's room for another one. You can add a few random curves here and some in between. And then to loosen that up with our little um, vine, we, we know fescue. I know we've, we've covered this one quite a lot. So it's mimicking that same flux shape. It's just a very thin line that we put this bulbous flux shape on and we can build off of it. To create little almost like in a bouquet when you have those little eucalyptus sprigs. You always just drive off the back of the one that you just did. You can also curve in like this, make almost like little hearts. So we're building our wreath. One more, and you could also obviously add other things, other flower um, kind of like patterns that we've learned. But I really like concentrating on the main pattern at hand, which is Flevi, because it's so beautiful. I can imagine that organza also kind of weaving in and around our wreath. But I have yet one more thing that we can do um, to make this really feel like a leaf or a wreath that is floral. And that is adding blossom. Blossom is this fun little tangle here. So simple that you don't really need to step out. You can just learn it and do it over and over again in many different scenarios. So I'm gonna start here and what it is, is just a line and then we're gonna make like a chicken foot. One, two, three. And little, little um, blossoms, little curves on the top of that. So one, two, three. And you can just keep randomly adding those, crossing them, going, drawing behind to really fill up your space with that. What looks like baby's breath. So I'm not gonna do this um, for time's sake, but you get the idea at how beautifully this loosens everything up. 
Make sure too that you don't forget to do your fescues and your um, little baby's breath blossom, it's called, is Tangle. And I'm sorry, I can't remember the person, person's name who, actually, I think it was Cass Hall who stepped it out. Uh, but you can look that up on tanglepatterns.com. It's called Blossom. And I love it. I use it all the time just for that purpose of just loosening kind of just denser tangles, loosening them up. Okay, so now I want to show you how to shade before it gets too late and you have to go back to work. Um, wherever these little um, leaves join in the ring or the wreath, you want to add some graphite and also down here because here they would be creating almost like a drop shadow or a cast shadow. And um, here we have I'm going to put a little bit on either side of the ring just to make it look more three-dimensional. Maybe also some more emphasizing this line that we um, weighted. And of course, as always, this is really quick and dirty. You wanna take your time and enjoy the shading, which just is gonna make this into a beautiful 3D piece of art. It'd be a really pretty uh, card for someone. You could add some calligraphy notes in there. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and blend my blending stone. But you see how these leaves look like they're just really popping up and out of that wreath woven in there. You can also kind of emphasize that midrib if you want to draw some of your um, shading up into the leaf. Makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional. These tiles are just so wonderful to shade on. I know I say this all the time, but I really love it. Um, this paper, it's Fabriano Tiepolo. It's a um, soft printmaking paper. And it's very forgiving in terms of shading. It, it lets you shade by just smearing very lightly um, instead of having to use the pressure of your stroke to get an even transition. So another place that you could shade, just to give these little berries a bit more spherical shape, you could just do a dab on one side, just like we do with our spheres. So they really look round. So there we have Fleavy. Now, as you can see, here's the finished one. One of the other things I did was obviously you can color it. I, I just took watercolor pencils and colored these, but then I added some highlights here. Um, I think you can see on here. Yeah, the I did add gold jelly roll into some of the perfs, so it looks like there are little gold beads in there. Um, and I added some white jelly roll to highlight some of the um, berry reflections. So there we have Fleavy, everyone. Enjoyed experimenting with this tangle. It's really, really fun. Um, and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now. Well, that's it for today's tangle. Thanks for joining me. If you like these lunchtime tutorials, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I also invite you to check out my website for classes that I've scheduled or to purchase my Tangle tags for your favorite step-ups. Our website is bowtangle.net. 
I'm also leaving you with some other links. Zentangle.com is where you can learn more about the Zentangle method from its founders, Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas. And you can also visit their store for a multitude of Zentangle paper tiles, tools, books, kits, subscribe to their newsletter and get some other really valuable resources. Tanglepatterns.com is that site I talk about where you can explore hundreds of tangle patterns, read about them, and get the step out, which is basically the deconstruction of the pattern so that you can recreate it on your own. And finally, if you'd like to share your session results with me and my student community, please join Annie's Botangle Alumni Facebook page. This is a private group where we inspire each other with our work and offer tips and useful information about art and Zentangle.